day in Cal Jam land, and this is one of our pre-Cal Jam podcasts with truly one of the biggest icons, one of my biggest mentors in the health arena. I'm not going to even call it alternative anymore because people are getting on board with everything that we've been teaching about real health and not drugs and not surgery, but actually accentuating the powers within the body. Dr. Joseph Mercola, say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone here. Hello, and welcome, and thank you for joining us. And I am really, really excited to have you back at Cal Jam. We missed you last year, but we're excited to have you back 2018 at the High Voltage Tour. And again, your book kind of goes along with it, your new book, which I truly love. Uh, I have to admit, I haven't finished it yet. I just bought it last Friday, and I was going to finish it last night, but I was here late. But it's all about energy and mitochondria, and you want to touch on that a little bit. Sure. It's the best book I've ever written. Uh, unlike most books, this is a peer-reviewed book. Well, what do I mean by that? We, we know when you write science articles, journal art, or articles, it's sent to your peers and they review it for errors. I sent it out, this book, the draft of the book, to two dozen of the top experts in the world. So it's not just my inflated ego opinions of what is right or wrong. This is a consensus book. And this is not the book for everyone. If you just want to lose a few pounds or tweak your diet, then don't buy this book. Please don't buy the book. You will be seriously disappointed. This is a really rigorous, aggressive approach to optimize your diet. Uh, initially motivated, uh, the initial motivation to write this book was the fact that 1,600 people die today, die tomorrow, died yesterday, it, just in the United States alone from cancer. Yeah. And 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 the the recommendations in this book are designed is really is the core of what you're going to use to treat cancer. So you have to, there's a lot of rigorous components to it. You've got to measure your food on a digital scale, uh, and you got to you know count things. And it's going to take a little extra time, but you only do that for a while. It's like r learning to ride a bike. Once you learn right. how to ride it, you're you're done. Yeah, and you monitor and, your blood too. Is one of the other things. Yeah, monitor your blood. It, right. You know, you don't have to, but it's going to. You know, that's a fine tuning. Obviously, you can listen to your body, but it doesn't just treat cancer; it treats heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, neurodegenerative diseases. You know, and probably very beneficial for autism. So, it is the. I, I think it's the gold standard diet. I've modified it a little bit since the book was published by because Stephen Gundry wrote his book, The Plant Paradox, which is all about lectins. So that's a, another little fine tweak into it because these lectins are these plant proteins that can, can trigger many autoimmune diseases. And it's really easy to integrate into what, I writ, what I've written. So, But it's a great book. I love it. And it's the best book, book I've written. And you probably didn't know this. The number one sold book in the entire country, number one on the Wall Street Journal, USA Today and Publishers Weekly. So we really, really? that's oh, awesome, yeah. man. The first the first time I've ever done that. Yeah, number one in the whole country. Now another book that you recommended at Cal Jam uh, a couple of years ago was Tripping Over the Truth. And yes, I mean, that is that is the book that motivated me writing this book. There's right, no question. Right, yeah. and that was whole. It was basically uh, just a book about preventing cancer ultimately. Well, no, it's deeper than that. It shows the, the, the deep fundamental flaws in the conventional model that is really focused on the genetic theory of cancer and right, why the metabolic right. approach to cancer pioneered by Dr. Seafried is really the, the right strategy. All right, and there's another book that I, and I thought the, they basically kind of parallel each other really well is Dave Asprey's sure. book, which you're a good friend with him as well, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, would you, we're, what we're, would you say would uh, be differences in your two uh, philosophies, if there are any? Well, our philosophies are pretty similar. Right. He, he focuses a little. I mean, he his he he came to this as an injured human being. He had his mycotoxic exposed and injured, and and really was overweight and uh, you know had a, some severe health challenges. So he adopted this to address his approach to address that. And he also really seeks to have more brain performance. He does a lot of nootropics, which I don't really go into or address. I'm, I'm really a primarily approaching from a pure health perspective and to treat disease. Where Dave isn't treating me disease, he's really optimizing health. So, I mean, I'm a physician. That's where I come from. And I see these people dying every day, suffering needlessly. It's just, it's just criminal that this, is, this, this approach isn't being used. Criminal, reprehensible negligent malpractice well we see that across the board i mean not yes. only with food but everything else that's going on in what's so-called so health care now you hit a, a good point there mycotoxic which I, I read in his book about uh people's 
uh, how molds can obviously disrupt mitochondrial function. And it was interesting that he had brought up the point that, you know, we've always had this little microbial war in the world with uh, funguses against bacteria and bacteria are actually what has been uh, theorized that they were what went into the cell and became the powerhouse of the cell. And I never really realized that eating molds or having, I mean, I've been, I've gotten almost more anal about my diet than anything lately, just reading both of these books uh, and trying to stay away from things that are going to downregulate the mitochondria. Well, let me just, spend, I don't want to spend a lot of the time on the book because it's really in there, but the, uh, let me tell you why the book is different. Not only is it the most detailed approach, but it really is revolutionary from an, from two primary perspectives and why it differs than conventional paleo or, or Atkins. The Atkins, because it focuses on the quality, but that's not right. a big deal. So, right. does, so does paleo. But the difference is this is cyclical. So we teach you a, a, a transitional ketosis, to, and that, which may take a few days for some people to a few months or even longer if you're metabolically challenged, so that your body starts pr producing ketones. Ketones are the most uh, efficient for some form of fuel that you can burn generates less reactive oxygen species, less secondary free radicals, which damage your cells. So that so once you're burning ketones, and here's the big difference, Billy, is that you switch immediately to cyclical ketosis. Like today, so twice a week, you have lots of healthy carbs. Like today is, I did, especially when you're doing strength training. So I did my strength training this morning. I had sweet potato, extra whey protein concentrate. You know, I increased my protein by, you know, almost uh, 50% and had a lot of, extra, tripled my carbohydrates. So that you feast on those days. So you're, this is not like a depth depriving diet the rest of your life and it just radically improves and, and to do ketosis by itself uh, without cycling in and out of it is actually highly counterproductive and will make you sick right what do you think about these newer products that are being produced where people actually just uh, I'm, I'm not yeah. even sure the source of ketones, but where are they well, getting? Are they synthetic, or what's the deal with that? No, no, no. They, they, there's two types. There's ketone esters and ketone salts. Ketone esters are a little more difficult and expensive to get to. The ketone salts are more generically available. I don't like either of them unless you're really metabolically challenged and you're struggling with Alzheimer's disease or cancer. Then I think there's a it's, it's appropriate to consider those types of tools because they've been shown to be beneficial. But just simply doing it yourself, right? It's a lot less expensive. And then if you my form of ketone supplement is uh, a type of medium chain triglycerides called caprylic acid. It's got eight carbons in it and it rapidly converts to ketones real quickly. And it's also a really useful fat that you can add to your program in the beginning stages because as you're making the transition to burning fat for fuel and you're primarily burning carbs, you're going to have this this window where you're not going to have energy and the way you can address that is by having some some of the MCT oil specifically the C8 caprylic acid but the warning caution is you can't have a lot of it you have to start small like a teaspoon otherwise you will get disaster pants, disaster pants. <laughs> yes. All right. Now, and right. you also mentioned in the book that there's uh, the C10 what's the difference between I mean they, they have C10 yeah, the, 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 the cheap one is C8 and C10, MCT oil, and it's got 50% of each. Uh, there, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not as effective as converting to ketones. There's an extra metabolic step in there, so you're not going to get as high a ketone level with the, with the, with the, um, the double mixture. Cool. Anything else you want to say about the book? Well, the other thing is that well, – Let me ask you, you know, this real quick, just for my own edification. Uh, sure. You recommended on the days when you're going into ketosis to minimize the amount of carbs. Do you rec you uh, recommended like 40 grams a day carbs? Was that right? Even – even 20 to 40, it depends on the person, but this is net carbs, and a net right. carb is far more carbohydrates than you think. So you can have a big bowl of, of salad like this, like weighs two pounds, and you might have five grams in there. Right. So, you know, it's a total carbs minus the fiber is the net carbs. Right. You said you supplement daily with fiber as well. Yeah, I do. Right, I supplement right. with multiple forms. I have, I have flax, chia, psyllium, and a general fiber that has, uh, it's an indigestible fiber source. So I have a, probably about 70 to 80 grams of fiber a day. Fiber is useful because you can't digest it. That's the definition. But your bacteria can, and when they do that, they make short-chain fatty acids like propionate, butyrate, and acetate that feed your colon and feed you too. So it's a re and actually get converted to ketones pretty quickly. So that's you know that's a way to really radically improve your health. Feed feed your microbes, and they'll be good to you. And they'll feed your brain, and they'll feed your immune system. I mean, basically increase your global expression of you keeping you healthy. I mean, that's we've always looked at health as something that we're going to try to push from inside out, but if we can really work on 
maximizing our nutrition and increasing the efficiency of our body and the energy levels and the vibratory just overall just energy in the body we can create a resistance to every disease that's out there in my opinion and again I oh, like, it's, I couldn't agree more right couldn't and, and again there's other components to that I mean you got you got to move once in a while you got to get proper rest and sleep I'm big on making sure the neurology is functioning at 100% through chiropractic which obviously you're back as well and then being happy and grateful and thankful and all those things and those same energies are going to create more of a just healthier vibration and a better expression of your own DNA. Well, what, what I want, wanted to mention is that uh, about six weeks ago now, I presented to the student body at Life, Co Life College. Wow. Which is, which is actually the biggest chiropractic college in the country. And I was, I was there two weeks ago, too. Yeah, I was just, I love life. Uh, I mean, it's really, I mean, it literally is 50 minutes from my house. Uh, wow. It was short, it's a short flight away from where I live in Florida. But uh, the I was astounded because I asked the student body the question, what is mTOR? And there's 2,000 students there and no one raised their hand. Uh, maybe someone knew and just was embarrassed to raise it, but I was really surprised they weren't teaching it. So mTOR is the other distinction in this book is, uh, and I certainly didn't come up with this. I, I learned about it primarily through Ron Rosedale, but it's a, it's a p metabolic pathway called the mechanistic target of rapamycin, rapamycin being an anti-cancer drug. And uh, when you activate it with excess protein, uh, you really suppress autophagy and you, you improve just impair your overall health. It's probably the most important metabolic signaling pathway in your body. So the other big distinction is the book is that we really promote only adequate protein, which for most people is surprisingly low. We're looking right. at 30, 50, maybe 60 grams a day, and most people are eating two to three times that every day. Right, and that puts a taxing uh, just effect yeah. on the body as well. Now, but but like the net carbs, that twice a week, the day you're doing strength training, you increase the protein, so you pulse it, and that's where the metabolic magic occurs. It's incredible, Billy. You know, you go on. I look at the the restrict the carb restriction and the protein restriction. It's kind of like exercise. You know, you you're damaging your body. You really don't get healthy when you're exercising. You get healthy when you recover, right? Right. Similarly, when you're stressing yourself with low, you're starving yourself with, or relatively starving with low carbs and low protein, and then you refeed, that's where the metabolic magic occurs. And your ketones, the day after you have that, like tomorrow, my ketones will jump through the roof. Even though I had like double or triple the amount of carbohydrates I would normally do, which is just crazy. It doesn't make any sense, but that's what is very consistent. Now, do you drink coffee yourself? I don't. I you don't know. enjoy the taste. And you know. I'm not trying to brag about that. I just don't like the flavor. You know, I, I, I'm a big believer in organic healthy coffee. I think there's there are a lot of great polyphenols, and I think Dave was right on target with that. Just got to get the healthiest coffee you can, and then you can add some butter or uh, MCT oil or both. Right. That's what I do. I also like to throw some lion's mane in there to get my brain to open up a little bit too. That'll work. Yeah. That'll work. So what are you going to talk about at CalGM this year? Some lots of exciting new information. You know, the other components that's in the book, just finishing up that, is there, you know, it's it's all, I call it the MMT, mitochondrial metabolic therapy, because it's not just this burning did you Did fuel. you coin that MMT? Or I was did, yeah. Yeah, cool. Right, right. Yeah, huh? I came up with it. Because it's, it's a mouthful. I wanted to make it in the title, but it's just too much of a mouthful. And what does the ROS stand for again that was in the book? R R R ROS is reactive oxygen species. Okay. That's a uh, molecule with an, with, uh, that's very reactive and creates free radicals. Free radicals have an unpaired electron. They, they float around and almost in instantaneously damage mitochondrial and cellular membranes, proteins, and DNA. So they destroy you. So we're, we're seeking to build up the health of your mitochondria. You've got a qu over a quadrillion mitochondria in your cells. Almost every cell in your body has them, except your red blood cells and your skin cells. And they, they really are vital to keep you healthy. So if you keep care of your mitochondria, I mean, you've got 10 times more mitochondria than you have bacteria in your, in your body. Yeah, it's so they're, amazing. They're really, and there's a lot of bacteria in your body too. Oh, it's, yeah. We're not yeah. minimizing that fact. Yeah, yeah. So exercise is one of the key ways that you do it. So we talk a lot about that. I'm, I'm, how much time do I have? It counts you got, as a 40, 40? You got 40 minutes, yeah. All right, so I, I, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna do it. I'm gonna do the Zach Bush 
nitric oxide dump. I'm going to take I'll take about five minutes and explore it because it's a form of exercise. It's, it's a three minute high intensity exercise that'll blow your mind. It dumps nitric oxide out, which is a very important signaling molecule. It's an anabolic signaling molecule, so it'll build lean body mass. The vasodilation lowers your blood pressure, makes your blood cells less sticky, and uh, it also improves your immune status. So, and it's a simple way to do it. it. Doesn't you don't need any equipment, and it's my preferred method of high intensity exercise. Now, three times a week. I mean, three times a day, three minutes. Yeah, because you taught that I think at your the first Cal Jam you're at. Oh no, no, I just learned it last November. Oh, okay. but you taught you taught the high intensity workout. So yes, yeah, but yeah. not no, this is a this is a this is a major radical revision that is good for everyone from teenagers or even younger to. 70 or 80 year olds yeah now and i i think the first book i read that you had written i don't i, I don't know if it was your first book but the first book that i i was introduced to you was uh, no grain diet and you were right on the money that, with that one that was my first book that was, was 2004. It? that was my first book okay. that was in new york interestingly that was a new york times bestseller not a number one but uh this book even though it was the number one book sold in the u.s by every metric <laughs> And out, so it was never made the New York Times list uh, of the top 15. Didn't even make the top 15 because they said we sold too many books on Amazon. We sold twice as many books as the number one on the on the New York Times list. So I'm a little bit annoyed with that that uh, organization. <laughs> needless to say, I think you're doing all right, Joe. I don't think you have anything to worry about. But it was interesting though because that was back almost. I was going through that whole macrobiotic phase where you would eat a lot of brown rice and a lot of grains, and that book really was an awakening for me and transitioned yeah. me out of it. it. It was a bit of uh, counterintuitive back then because there weren't a lot of people talking about low grain, certainly Atkins, but not many others. Right. So it kind of woke people up to it. And obviously Atkins was about eating uh, grease and, and, and unclean proteins, which, again, it, it works, but... You're, I think yeah, you're, well, he wasn't cyclical either. So, but he did. You know, you can't discredit him because he he was a real pioneer. He took a lot of arrows in the back, and I'm really grateful that he he put his work out there. And he he, he sensitized people to this whole issue of ketones because even back then, and today, but back then certainly there was this fear of ketones because there was a confusion between nutritional ketosis and diabetic ketoacidosis, two completely different clinical entities. Uh, and they're not the same in any way, shape, or form. So he helped clear up that confusion. I'm grateful for that. And what's up with the media? Uh, I think it just came out within the last couple of days. Uh, again. Yeah, the American, American Heart Association and coconut yeah. oil. What's up with that? I, mean, uh, I don't they... know. We're still in the process of evaluating it. By the time this interview gets aired, I'm sure we'll have an. We're, we, we're planning on writing an article on it, so we're we'll still doing the research. I haven't read the study yet. I just seen comments on it, so I've got to, you know, it's to respond to this craziness. You've got to read the study and then you got to do the due diligence. But there's no the, co- saturated fat like coconut oil. That's healthy for you. There's right. just no question. About I mean, it. there's no way you're going to get pushing pushing us from mar- butter back into margarine again. I think everybody went through that in the what it was yeah. the '60s or what it was. Yeah, I, I've got to look at the funding on that study and see who did it, who was behind it. I mean, that's you know the the conflict of interest in these studies are just uh, just enormous. So we'll, we're it's almost as bad as tell us to get on a hard high carb diet. You know, it's like almost that yeah. bad. So people aren't stupid. They're you know, but but. The some people are not a lot, but some people. Oh are. yeah, yeah. Some people are. There's no question about it. There was. I just saw the other day, seven percent of the people polled thought that chocolate milk came from brown cows. You got to be kidding. Well, you know, I don't know what that 7%. is. Seven percent. Right. I. It's just like brown bread. You know, whole wheat bread. They think that's comes from brown grain or something. Yeah, I think there's something going on. It might be something in the water. It might be something in the food. It might be something in injectables and the kids. I think there's definitely some neurotoxins that are getting spread around and people just don't think at that higher level anymore. Not everybody, but there's a few people that are have their IQ suppressed by the powers that be. Yeah, and you know what one of those things are that I'm going to talk about at CalGem? Would you like to know? I would the love to know. I would like yeah, to know. Now, you know what this is, but I just recently learned the mechanism and the beautiful thing about understanding how a toxin or a pernicious influence causes this pathology, you can remediate it against it. So let me tell you what the toxin is. Electromagnetic radiation, EMFs, oh, micro 
micro specifically. So there's no for you and everyone watching this, I'm sure knows of the danger of that, but we don't know how it causes danger. Right. We we are reassured by the experts that it, because it's it's safe because it doesn't cause any thermal toxicity. And by that I mean it the the frequencies in your cell phone are the same as in your microwave oven. They're from a few hundred megahertz to a few gigahertz. And that's going to change when we get 5G that's coming out in a few years. And it'll probably go up to 100 gigahertz. But right now, that's the frequency range. And the way mic your microwave oven works is it, is it vibrates these charged particles in the cells of the, of the food and it creates heat. Well, when they measured this event in your cells, when you're exposed to the, to the power level dense, energy densities of cell, cell phones, they find that it doesn't generate the heat. And they're right. It does not. There is essentially no thermal damage from your cell phone. But what they failed to appreciate, and the reason why the safety standards on your cell phone are off by a factor of not 10, not 100, not 1,000, not even 100,000, but 7 million times are because they failed to understand that the EMF exposure is mediated through something called a voltage-gated calcium channel. And the, when these channels are activated by the radiation, and these channels are 7 million times more sensitive to the, to the charged particles inside and outside your cells, it releases calcium ions into your cell. What do these calcium ions do? They proceed to uh, activate excessive nitric oxide because remember I mentioned earlier nitric oxide is good but if you have excessive it's a real problem the nitric oxide combines with superoxide to form to form this highly reactive nitrogen uh, reactive nitrogen species called perioxynitrate and then what does what perioxynitrate does it causes this massive increase in hydroxyl free radicals the most dangerous free radical known to man so that is how cell phones cause damage. And here's an interesting fact. What are the tissues with the highest density of voltage-gated calcium? Voltage, no, the tissues. That mitochondria is a cell. That's an organelle within the right. cell. The, the tissues with the highest density of voltage-gated calcium channels. Be your brain, right? Your brain that is that, and nerve tissue and the pacemaker in your heart. So what does that mean? Let me tell you the do downside side effects of this. This means that Alzheimer's, autism, anxiety, depression, and arrhythmias. How many people do you know that have atrial arrhythmias? And you know what it most likely is? It's a result of exposure to this microwave radiation. And if they can mitigate that and lower that, it's it's great. Now you know this, this was found by Dr. Martin Paul P A L L, uh, and he's got a lot of YouTube videos. It goes into far greater detail than I just just uh, scanned over. But he, there are 26 studies that showed that it, you, when you use a calcium channel blocker, it mitigates this effect. That's how they figure this out in in uh, in vitro and in small animal studies. So what we are working on, we're actually working on with Dr. Zach Bush, is the uh, we're doing research to find out a natural calcium channel blocker that can mitigate against. And what's your best guess for a natural calcium channel blocker? I have no idea. Magnesium. Oh, you said that in the book. Yes. Yes. You also talked yeah, about the hydroxyl groups. The but I didn't, yeah, but I didn't talk. I didn't know about this connection until just a few weeks ago, and I didn't understand. I knew it was – after the book was written, I learned that it was peroxynitrate. I didn't know how peroxynitrate was generated, but now we do thanks to Dr. Martin Paul. So – the other way you can mitigate against this is to neutralize the hydroxyl free radical. And and uh, what do you think is the most effective antidote for hydroxyl free radicals? Known to man. I have no idea either. I could guess, but go ahead. It's, I'll give you a hint. It's the smallest atom in the universe. That would be hydrogen, right? Hydrogen gas. Okay. Molecular Hydrogen. hydrogen gas. Okay. And instantly neutralize it. So I'm. That would I make will, water, right? Yes. That when you neutralize <laughs> it, you get hydrogen gas and hydroxyl free radicals, and it forms the that waste product is water. Look at all that chemistry I had thirty some yeah. years ago. I still remember some it, of it. It's even better. It's it's cellular water, so it's something we call deuterium depleted water, which is the healthiest water you can get. So it's it's a really healthy form of water. Is that so called you, smooth water or something. Somebody else. I don't know if I was well, reading that in your book. Well, or there's there's easy water. Easy which, water. 
which is which is also called structured water and i you know this is at a molecular level so i don't you know typically structured water refers to a larger volume and that's what happens that's another mitochondrial hack which you can do is you can walk like you and I can, and I do. I just got back from my an hour and a half walk, daily walk, that I'm, when I'm in Florida, and I d- walk with no shoes and I'm barefoot, so I'm not only absorbing electrons from my uh, walking, but I'm also getting red and near and mid infrared from the sun, not just the UVB, but the infrared, and that, in addition to the UV, UV structures your water intercellularly. Wow. Now I'm one of the. I still haven't stepped up to the plate and bought a cell phone yet, and I. Oh, that, okay. I've. I don't know if you knew that. I mean, I've been. I've been on the anti EMF thing for a while, but it's kind of hard to get even. Even not having a cell phone, we're be, being bombarded by it. I know. Don't you yeah. sleep in some EMF tent or something that protects you? From- I do. Well, let me let me just expand it. That was a great point. Thank you for bringing it up, Billy. Because it's not just your cell phone. So, so you could be right, someone like right. a individual person like yourself that doesn't have one. It could be this your the, all the people who have cell phones around it, but the cell phone towers. Right. Your, your Wi-Fi, a router in your house, which we turn off every night. Baby monitors. Uh, or have one of those. Well, that well, a lot of people do. They're wireless, so anything that's wireless and portable phones. You can believe how many people still have a portable phone. Those are probably one of the worst. No, I got so, cords. Cords. I like cord. I like old school. And here's the other thing. I had my desktop computer. Actually, darn it, I got the meter in the other room. I'll bring it to Calgem. Uh, but you can actually measure these microwaves. So when I have my phone, I put it on a selfie stick and speaker. So I am talking, and the phone is three feet away from me. From my hand, even. Right. So, you know, this way the radiation goes down by like 90, 95%. So, I, I, you know, I'm not a technophobe. I love technology. Thank God for it. That's one of the reasons our website has exploded is because I understand technology. But you've got to use it cautiously and wisely. No and question. And it's not just the EMF that's the problem either. I think we have a whole society that is in a trance. I mean, you watch people. Oh. You look at kids today and they are literally addicted to – I mean I'll adjust somebody and the second after I'm done adjusting them, the first thing they do is grab their phone and see if they missed anything. I'm, I i don't know. I grew up without them and I want to see if I can navigate the jungle without it. I've got people that help me with a lot of things. No, I think you're spot on and I'm not sure if you saw that 60-minute interview that was rebroadcast just like two weeks ago. They had a, a – former Google executive from a, a, a company that they had bought and he was an exec there and he got the insider scoop on it and he did a 60-minute interview. They, this is by design. Uh, of course they have it very is, man. People. It's addictive behavior. They've got these people going on every 15 minutes because it's like reward. It's the same technology they use in the gambling casinos. It's I like cocaine, man. It's the same thing. It, it, it hits the same reward centers in the brain. And you know what it, I've noticed too and I don't know if this is part of the whole design is that people – don't have that social I mean when you and I grew up there was more of a thing where you would say hi to people and look people in the eye now like my neighbor walked by the other day and she walked right by us a a, a group of us and didn't look at us say hi it's just people are desensitized to other people now because everything is so digital that they don't even know how to interact socially anymore and I think what that's doing is separating us further and further and creating more separation between people yeah, which is, I, I think, a part of the master plan. It doesn't. Yeah, it could be, but it doesn't have to be that way. I think you can use these wisely and avoid some of those complications. I have a cell phone. I have a smartphone. But you know, one of the best ones. I get the best technology every year. But I'm not addicted to it. I may use it a few times a day, and most of the time. You know, I used to I was not aware of this when I was writing the book because I would carry my cell phone on in my back pocket when I did my beach walks thinking I'm so damn healthy. I eat the right foot weight weight and I'm exercising. I'm not immune to this was uh, I was ignorant, arrogant ignorance is what I call it. You're not going to get gluteal cancer or anything, are you? No, 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 no. I'm pretty healthy. I don't think it'd be an issue, but it was definitely a problem. It was definitely messing me up. So now I do carry my cell phone, but it's in airplane mode. And I will show you here, because it's going to be easy to see. Uh, I have a bag. It's called a Faraday bag made by Mission Darkness. You can get it for like 20 bucks on Amazon. And you close it up, and it's a fair, and it's in a Faraday cage. And that, I forgot to respond to your comment earlier that it, I sleep in a Faraday cage. It's a sheer fabric that is made of cotton, copper, and silver threads. And it, it clearly radically lowers your the energy microwave 
energy coming at you. And I measure, I have a very sophisticated microwave meter, which I'm going to bring to CalGEM that will show people and demonstrate to them because I never got this. I never understood it until I got that microwave meter. It changed my life. It's only about 350 bucks, but it shows you exactly what your exposures are. And I had so many hidden ones. Like on my computer, I had a desktop. It was plugged in with an ethernet wire, right? I thought I was safe. Didn't have the meter. How was I supposed to know? Right, right. Little did I know by default that computer came with the wire is turned on and Bluetooth turned on. You have to go in there manually and turn it off. Wow. So you just don't plug in the Ethernet cable. You've got to make sure all this stuff is off and you can confirm it by measuring it. So where would you find, number one, the uh, the tent and where would the... Well, that's a little more complicated. We're actually we're working with a, a woman who put together the first organic textile uh, mill in the United States. In fact, we're going to we're have a campaign this fall before CalGEM. Uh, to, it's called the Dirt Shirt, 100% organic cotton t-shirts, and the, all the 100% of the profits goes to support regenerative agriculture. But we're going to pr- try to have our whole line of organic clothing. Uh, so we're in the process. Why did I go on this tangent? Not to sell our stuff, but to just to explain that we are working with this woman to develop an organic version of this tent and made in the United States. Because right now they're kind of pricey, about fifteen hundred bucks. But if you want, if you don't want to wait till then, because we probably have it next year, hopefully by the time of Calgary, but maybe not. Uh, you can go online and just look up EMF canopy, uh, and you know we, they're about about fifteen hundred dollars though. Most of the material is made overseas. Uh, the big one is called Natural, N-A-T-U-R-E-L-L, and there's different versions of that. I like to get the, the thicker density one, but man, I go in there. There's these these. You go in there, you turn on your meter, and it just it drops down to essentially zero. There's wow. like nothing that's coming through. And if you live on the second floor, and where where would you get the meter, and what's the the company and brand you would recommend? Oh, as the, far as the, the meter that I recommend. Well, there's a number of them, but the one the the more sophisticated quantitative one where you can actually get a measurement is called the TES five nine three. TES five nine three. You can buy it on Amazon. Okay. It re- it retails for five hundred, but you shouldn't pay more than three fifty. Right. So I think you can get it on Amazon for three fifty. And then there's another one called the Acousticom two, which is less. I think it's like two hundred dollars or maybe one fifty. And that has the audible version. So that's the one I use at night to get in the tent and I make sure when I turn it on and I turn on the audible, it's quiet. Right. But you go almost anywhere in an industrialized society and that thing will be beeping like crazy. Wow, that's interesting. I, I actually, back when Fukushima was in the news, and I still use it, but I have a actually a, a Geiger uh, counter. Geiger right? counter. Yeah, yeah, I checked it. I checked the water typically. I've checked food. Yeah, I've got one. I've got one too. And then, you know, where, where I would encourage you because you do travel, right? You fly. I airport. travel everywhere. Okay, so bring that with you when you fly. Wow. The level in the air it's not cesium that you're getting from Fukushima. It's these are gamma rays that you're getting that from will sun, also right? cause it to go up from the sun or, right. or from other stars, you know. But it, it's going to go up. I think the last time I checked was like ten or fifty times higher than at ground level. Wow, that's amazing. Now sometimes that may be helpful, and there's a hormetic benefit. Uh, people living at altitude clearly seem to live longer and healthier, and this may be due to the radiation exposure. But that's a 10,000 feet. Very few people live over 10,000. Even 8,000 is kind of high. But when you're in a plane, you're 35,000 feet. That's a lot higher. There's no, there's, that's higher than any mountain on this planet. So, Right. Now, do you – at when I saw you at Longevity, David Wolf's gig, you had on those red sunglasses, and I know yes. there's a whole well, – I you, think it. You look it like Bono. I don't know if anybody told you. Yeah, that. I did. It was, it yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah the um, actually, I, I, when you saw me at Longevity, I was wearing amber, but Dave Dave Asprey kind of helped me understand that. It, and in that setting, the amber was correct because it was daytime, and I was inside a room that had no natural light and just had artificial fluorescent lighting. So that's why I wore them. But after the sun goes down. It's probably best to wear red, red glasses. Red, right, right. Because red will stop the blue and the, not only the blue, but the yellow and the green, which can also impair melatonin. So that's what I wear when the sun goes down. Or What like, would you wear outside in the regular sun? No sunglasses at all? No or? sunglasses at all. That's one of the biggest mistakes. I walk right, the beach every right, day, okay? Right. And I see, like, the majority of people wearing sunglasses. They're wearing shoes. They're wearing too many clothes. Right, right. And uh, they're wearing sunscreen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is carcinogenic in itself, most of it, right? Yeah, right. Most of it. Although ours, our, you know, we do have a healthy sunscreen, and it was rated by the Environmental Working Group and Time Magazine as the number one sunscreen out there. 
Just last I, week. I try to get away without using it. The only times oh, I, I, I would recommend that. Oh, but some people need a sunscreen. Right, yeah. of course. But you know what I tell people is just wear a hat or some clothing yeah. to cover it up. I mean, you know, when I travel surfing, I wear lycra and I try to cover up as much as I wear a hat when I surf. Because, I mean, when you're How in. How do you keep in, your hat on? Do you, have, do you have a strap? Yeah, you wear a little strap underneath. Yeah, it okay, stays yeah. on great. I mean, they've got it. Because when you're in Indonesia or Fiji, you look at the people that live in those areas. You look at they have a lot oh. more melanin in their skin than we white boys have. So they're obviously going to be more resistant to the sun where if I'm out there for two hours with no sunblock on, I'm dust. I mean, I'm not going to be certain. Yeah. So what you, your, your advice to wear the cap is wise because you don't need sun on your face because no. your skin is very thin up there and it predisposes yourself to photo aging. So I would definitely shade that with right. some type of hat. No question. So, but is your sunblock that you sell? Is it water? I mean, proof. Yeah, it's or? waterproof, but you know, it makes you look like a ghost. Why? I don't. Do you think I care? I mean, I'm not out trying. Yeah, to well, if you do, it's, it's the way to go. There's no question. It's the safest one out there. Okay, cool. So, um, at least that was voted. I was so cool. I'm because I normally read Time Magazine's feed every day just for news articles and studies. And I said, "Ooh, the top sunscreens were there." And ours was listed number one. I couldn't wow, believe it. Wow, awesome. Because wow. normally Time hates us. You know, they really. Don't don't care for my approach. They're part of the faux, faux fake news media, you know. Yeah, and there's a lot of that going out there. And Erin reports on a lot of the fake news too. She's kind of a night owl, huh? Yeah, she's. It's not uncommon where she's going to bed when I'm getting up, and you know, <laughs> so. what a trip. She, so I, you know, that's definitely not helping her chronobiological health. But uh, you know, that's kind of the way she's built. I'm kind and of I, wired that way too, but. Hey, Bill, I think you need a few more ice cubes in that container or a bigger container, either one. I'm, I'm a water fiend, okay? You know when those, those ice cubes do in that container, they actually help structure the water because when the water gets to 39, it sort of self-structures. Wow. And those are ice cubes are fluoride-free. Those are all... I sure the heck would hope so. Fluoride, yeah. the most pernicious anti-mitochondrial poisons you can use is fluoride. So you should never be drinking fluoride in your tap water. Why is that That's, so hard for people to understand that stuff? Uh, because, I'll tell They're you conditioned. why. Because we've had more than five decades of the experts, public health authority, and the media telling this was the ben one of the best benefits to mankind in the 20th century was fluoridation of the water supply so we can find so, so we can find a place to dump all of our waste products from all aluminum manufacturing yeah, yeah it's and that and others i mean i'm some people believe it i mean uh, uh, medical authorities and they believe they're doing the right things just like do with vaccines but it's not, i mean it's the same thing like my dentist still believes in florida i'm going haven't you read a book or anything in the last three well you decades? know what time you know what time it is don't you billy what time is it time to find a new dentist yeah i know but i have, <laughs> I have and he just cleans my teeth and he knows that i'm not into fluoride so he doesn't douse get, me a up. Bio, get a biological dentist man yeah so i can help you out well you know i was just finishing reading a book today because i read about 200 books a year i saw that in your book I was, and that's uh, you have been more free time than me i think yeah see i read this book today healing with ozone i just oh, went wow. to, I just came back from colorado springs at one of the top O o ozone conferences and uh, you know you can use ozone ozone generous for a number of things you can use them on your teeth like if you're feeling you're getting coming down with a tooth infection that's going to have to have a cavity or even the tooth pulled just try some ozone on there i've tried it a number of times in the past few years and it's worked like a charm in a few days that pain is gone and it never comes back it's just amazing ozone for dental health now you amazing. just you just recently spoke at uh Dr. Pompa's event in was that in yes, Atlanta? In Atlanta with uh, Ben Greenfield. Ben yeah, like Greenfield, ben. that's the guy you recommended. Yeah, Ben Ben Greenfield is a good friend. He is a young guy, incredible, incredible shape. He's not an MD. He went to went to was going to medical school, but wisely avoided it, and now is in physical therapy and just really into fitness and interview some of the top i get a lot of good guests from his show i mean i don't know how he finds them but he comes up with some really intriguing in, information so i love ben so what where are you at with the whole tcd product as far as the uh hydrolyzed TCD. the hydrolyzed zeolite oh hydrolyzed zeolite uh it's not grass so we can't sell it because we have to grass means generally recognize right, as safe, safe. so right, it's, right. they haven't done the studies yet so they, they say they're going to do them but it seems to be a highly effective detoxification agent in addition with a lot of other things now let me let me just expand on that because that's a huge important principle so detox we know i mean you have to eat the right food but if you're poisoned with heavy metals and all these other things it's going to be a problem but did you know 
that your ability to detoxify effectively and to eliminate the parasites that most of us have is seriously impaired when you're exposed to this EMF radiation. So you, the first step is to mitigate the EMF, and that's why I think that EMF meter to figure out where in yeah, your that's environment. I'm buying one. I'm on it. I yeah. think I'm going to buy the tent because I I turn off the Wi-Fi in the house every night, and even David yeah. Wolf's recommend to turn off all the electricity to the house. Well, keep keep. Well, I don't, well, there's another type. See, there's three types. There's magnetic, there's electrical, which is uh, extra low frequency, uh, and then uh, there's the microwave. There's right. ionizing too. Oh, interestingly, what I neglected to say that this new research with the uh, with the uh, the peroxynitrate and the hydroxyl free radicals, sh you know, most of the damage from ionizing radiation is, you know, the high energy bonds they they break the covalent bonds, single and double stranded breaks in the DNA. But that's not the way most of them get broken. They get broken through free radical generation because the microwaves are not as high powered or high energy as as the ionizing radiation. Right. It's not ionizing radiation. It doesn't directly break bonds, but it does break them. It causes single and double stranded breaks in the DNA because of the free radical damage. So that it, interesting, the microwaves from the cell phones cause more genetic damage than the ionizing radiation. So it's, wow, line, it's more dangerous than your X-rays. That's amazing. Now, yeah. when you get in that tent, do you feel kind of a decrease in just? Oh, I, yeah, I got the aura ring too, which is another hint I got from Ben. It's really cool. I know you probably you can put this in airplane mode. So, and I've measured it with the meter. There's no radiation coming from this thing, but it measures your heart rate variability, your temperature at night, when when you're you know the lowest uh, your heart rate, not only what your lowest heart rate is at night, but what time it occurred, which is a really good in indicator of your recovery status. And you know when you can push it the next day, and when you can't, gives you a, a uh, and. Uh, yeah, heart rate variability. So it's, it's just an amazing system. And it counts the number of steps, too, which is like a nice little bonus. Um, but um, I was going somewhere with this. The That was the tangent. The um, I'm guilty I'm, of that, too. I go on tangents, oh, but, and I can't find when, my way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, get, when you get that meter, email me. Let me know what you're finding. I'm there, and, and go to lesseremf.com which sells it, but don't buy it there because it's, it's too pricey. They sell, tell it for retail, but there's like a dozen videos there that teaches you how to use it, okay? Cool. So you're going to want to use the, there's there's four units that you can measure and you want to use the microwatts per centimeter squared. Microwatts, microwatts per, per centimeter cent squared. It's the last one, you have to press the, the unit button four times or three times. And ideally it should be about 0 .03 or lower. Then you're in good range. You know, when my office, I'm gonna, I actually, one of my new projects, I've got a Wi-Fi router, but it's really far away. It doesn't reach here. I'm still gonna switch it out to just a regular cable modem and and just and a separate Wi-Fi router. They only turn on when I need it, so it'll be off most of the day. That's great. That's my new project. Hopefully, I'll finish it this week. So, do you have any recommendations on books to kind of get a better understanding of the light that we're like all the different types of lights, whether it's a halogen, fluorescent light? what we can do to maximize I, I, well there's a few yeah, I mean because I know really Dave good. Dave talks about it a lot in Headstrong Dave's, Dave, that would be one book I mean there's but no it doesn't book. go into depth a lot. I mean, I want no, to... no. I mean, I would go to my site and look the stuff up. You don't have to pay for it. Is anything? Look at my interview with Alexander Wunsch, W U N S C H. He's probably one of the top photobiology experts in the world. A little difficult to understand. He's got a thick German accent, and he's not really a dynamic speaker, but he's really, really smart when it comes to photobiology. Uh, Jack Cruz does a lot on this too. He's an MD, a neurosurgeon out of. Uh, New Orleans, uh, but there's no good books. I, my next book is going to be an integration, probably not detox, but photobiology uh, and EMF. More, more yeah, that life. sounds awesome. Yeah, so I'm going to have to write it because there's too many damn lives at stake. Uh, right, and right. It, and it's it's really a sort of a subset of fat for fuel. Um, and by the time I make Calgen, well, my next book will be out, which is the Fat for Fuel Cookbook. <laughs> Which is just a little tiny book. I mean, because people want recipes. We didn't they love that recipes. stuff. They love We recipes. didn't put any recipes in Fat for Fuel. But I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was a labor of love and, you know. No, I'm just, halfway through it. I was going to finish reading it last night, but I didn't get home from with Dell till 1130. Yeah, that happens. You got to get your sleep. No yeah, question. I need my sleep. We all need our sleep, not just Billy DeMoss. <laughs> right. And actually, I don't know about you, but do you feel like you need more sleep as you've gotten older or? 
No, one of my biggest biological challenges is deep sleep. The aura ring I neglected to mention not only measures the total amount of time that you sleep, when you go to sleep, when you wake up, how many disturbances, what how, what percentage is light sleep, REM sleep, and here is the key, deep sleep, the most restorative stage of your sleep. Like last so I'm challenged. It should be about 10, 15 percent, but I'm usually well under five percent. Last night I got zero point zero minutes. So I'm trying to biohack my deep sleep improvement. Uh, I was playing with. I was just in Colorado, so I did. I was able to purchase some recreational marijuana and use some high THC to do it. I was but just going to ask you about that because that's what I've yeah. been doing lately, and it's like really has just. I think I've been taking too much. That's why I've been sleeping more. Because yeah, I used yeah, to get by be- on five or six, and I've been like last night I got seven and a half, which is a lot for me. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I still have to play a little bit more with it, but I've, I've heard the THC can do it. It's not the CBD, although it has a lot of good benefits. I too. think it's a blend of both. I mean, the thing is, yeah, you I can't you isolate. Both, I mean, there's also other things in there that we, the whole synergistic entourage effect of everything that's in the plant. That's yeah. the problem with medicine. They try to isolate one molecule uh, I, and synthesize it, and it doesn't work that way. Like, take the hell nature. Off the, I'm- I'm really into regenerative agriculture. I believe me, I'd have a. Little, I've got an acre next door. I just got, and I'm going to convert it to a farm essentially. And I would be growing a big crop of marijuana if it was legal or cannabis because it's like an incredible plant. I would juice it every day. I would too. I mean, can't yeah. you grow anything in Florida? No, no. It's medical marijuana is legal, but not recreational. I mean, they would throw you in jail. So there's no way. I think we can grow up to eight plants you, here in California. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely do that. No question. And then just <laughs> like you said, just juice it. Because I'm yeah, big on juicing, and I'm sure it's low glycemic. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, there's not much sugar in there at all. There's no sugar. It probably is like hey, it's point, low glycemic juice, man. 0. 0. 0. 0.1 gram in that carb. It's probably got more protein than, than carbs. So. It's funny. I did a, a, a CBD workshop here for my patients because we started our own line of CBD products too. And I made brownies, you know. Uh, they were Edibles. They were healthy brownies, but we used – actually a CBD oil with no THC in it. So there's no yeah, THC yeah. in it. But all these people got like a placebo buzz out of it. I'm going, there's, oh, yeah, yeah. folks, there's no THC in it. <laughs> it's just funny, the direction. But what do you think about that? I mean, I not to, I wanted to ask you one other question. I, I go off on tangents too, but the whole kind of uh, marijuana movement, getting into the whole thing of treating cancer and uh, neurogenitive oh, yeah, they- diseases. And I mean... I mean, there's the, my understanding that there's a pharmaceutical company just finishing, finishing phase two or phase three clinical trials, which will essentially make it a drug. And most of the CBD in the market will not be on the market uh, anymore. They're going to come after it. So there's the government is really hard coming hard down on this. There may be some loopholes around it. To, but don't that just open up more of a black market again? I mean, the people when they know. Well, I, I personally believe that the states are going to ride. How many states now is it legal in? Is it like a few dozen? So, uh, you know, when and everyone in the country thinks it should be legal, and it doesn't matter what the hell the federal government thinks, it's going to override it, you know? Right. But nobody wants to go to jail. As I always say, Charlie don't surf. And I, the last thing I want to do is go to jail for trying to help people. Right. <clears throat> Because I heard in North Dakota, some people got busted in some health food store for having CBD products, and they were going to check the levels of THC to see if there was any in there. And they're looking at 20 years in prison for just carrying a CBD product, which to me it blows yeah. my mind. This is well, still it, happening in a world where we're supposed to have some freedom. At. Yeah, it might happen even more after this pharmaceutical company finishes their clinical trials, which will be well before Caljam. So, do you know what the name of the pharmaceutical company is? I did know, but I forgot. Is it GW Pharmaceuticals or something? No, it's not GW. Okay. I wonder if I wrote it down. I might be able to have it here. I don't know if I wrote it down. Let me ask you this. I mean, back to EMFs, you know, because mm-hmm. that's something that's been recent to the human species to some degree when you not agree. I'm sorry. I was looking it up. What was the question? The whole exposure to EMFs is something that's new to the human species. Oh, I mean, yeah, yes, yes, yes. There's no question. I mean, yeah. look at these yeah, yeah. Ki- these well, kids today. I mean, what are, what's this, going on? This is a whole book. This is why I wanted to share some of it at CalGem. Hopefully, they'll be well. I might have even yeah, I might have even finished the book by the time I get to CalGem. Uh, certainly long, far on the way to having it completed. But there's a whole backstory here. There's a massive suppression of this information by the, the military and the government. And you, I don't know if you have heard of the Moscow signal that, that had, with the Moscow embassy was being – U.S. embassy in Moscow was being bombarded by microwave radiation by the Soviets in the No, 60s. I didn't hear that. Oh, you should look it up. called the Moscow signal. And they were – killing these these american citizens in the embassy with this relatively 
dose of microwave radiation is very similar to our cell phones. It's causing all this pathology, well acknowledged. The Soviets known about this for a long time, and this sounds like, well, it sounds like a conspiracy signal, but this, just look it up. And then they kind of squash this, because it's surprising even someone like yourself has not been aware of that. But it's, you know, it happened probably before you were born or close to it. Uh, and it was big, it was, hu- it was huge. And um, so, that, and then the, the fact that the military uses radar, which is also microwaves, so they suppress this. The Department of Defense suppresses the information. And of course, the telecom industry is going to hire these experts. Of course. As I said. And they, they've got solid science supporting a non thermal effect, and they're sticking to that like glue, says, you know, supporting the effects. In fact, I was re- there was a there was an article, a study that came out this morning in France. My sister sent it to me. I think I, oh, I still have it up. The phone gate, the French government data indicates cell phones expose consumers to radiation levels higher than manufacturers claim. And these are using the thermal ones, the standards. As I said earlier, the standards really are closer to, uh, let me see here, get back to your screen. Where are you? There you are. Okay. Uh, seven million times off. In other words, the, the safety level should be seven million times lower than they are for safety. And because no one or virtually no one understands or appreciates this bolted cal- cal- calcium channel uh, gate that is really the gated voltage, voltage gated calcium channels that are responsible for uh, pr- uh, causing the toxicity from the EMF exposure. Yeah, I mean, even smart meters everywhere. I mean, there's just oh, that's get... the one I forgot. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, God, can, those you things. Can, you can opt. You can opt out in California, can't you? Right, 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 right. Yeah, I've opted out here. It's going to cost you about three hundred bucks a year, or maybe a little bit more. It's better I mean, than I've... frying your brain. I don't know. It's just oh like yeah, I mean... I, and your heart. You know, if any of you or if you Billy or any of your friends or people watching this know people with arrhythmias, you got to tell them about this high dose magnesium and stay away. Get that meter and find all these sources of EMF in your in your environment. Could be it, you know, and just measure it all over. You will be surprised. I'm getting one. I'm all yeah. over it. I love yeah. stuff like that. I love little yeah. gadgets like that. Measure stuff. Yeah, and then it's so useful because with your patients, you can show them. You know, t- turn your phone on, call someone, and it goes. Whoa, through the roof. Now hold it out here. I hold it on a selfie stick and see what the radiation goes down to. And then once they see it, then they can, then they will adopt it because they'll understand that they'll realize that there's there's real danger here. So everybody's going to be walking around in the future holding selfie sticks, talking on their phone. Well, that would be my <laughs> idea. I, you know, I, I, there may be some way to mitigate it. Uh, additional to that, but I'm thinking right now the hydrogen gas would stop the hydroxyl toxicity and then the magnesium high dose magnesium could block the voltage gated calcium channels we're right. doing the research right now i'll know and what calcium. form of magnesium did you recommend I, I was in the book and i can't well, remember you, well you don't want you know if you take high dose you probably need really high dose to get a calcium channel blocker effect so the higher you go with magnesium the side effect is it's a laxative so right take more the non-laxative effect like magnesium three and eight which tends to go more with the brain anyway which is where these bolted calcium channels are where you need them the most the vein of the heart so but i was also you know you look at you know we didn't grow up with cell phones i mean i just yeah. can't ex- imagine what the because you look at kids too they've got a thinner calvarian their skulls thinner they the have temporal high, lobe the temporal plate i mean that's the thinnest section right of the, of the skull. and it's going right in and plus they have more water which is enhances the penetration so they they are far more uh, susceptible uh, susceptible to damage from the emf exposure. and it's cumulative too i mean yes. you and i maybe have been exposed to emfs just for what the past how many like 20 30 years uh, at the high doses that we're getting these yeah. kids are getting a lifetime of it i mean they're growing yeah. up i see but three-year-olds with cell phones i mean with their parents cell phone Please, you know, I'm pretty bright. I've, I'm really passionate about health, and I was arrogantly ignorant. And I don't, don't want any of your viewers to make the same mistake I did to think that you are somehow immune, that your biology is protected because you're eating healthy, you're doing chiropractic, and you're exercising. You don't, you don't need to be concerned with it. That is a bunch of crap, and it will take you out prematurely, guaranteed. Yeah. I mean, I had some health problems from this, and I'm convinced that it was related to high EMF exposure that have been mitigated once, once I recognized that and, and really lessened my exposure. Hey, I was also talking to, uh, or I think it was Dell last night. We were talking about he had gotten in one of those tents, and also done some grounding at the same time. And almost, yeah. he said it almost made him feel nauseous because I think it's your body actually gets conditioned to some degree <laughs> to all the. Is that a possibility? 
I mean, it's, anything's possible. I don't think it's likely. I mean, okay. I've been grounded for 10, 10 years, so I've, obviously I'm grounded in my EMF tent. Uh, but it's very peaceful. I think most people will notice an improvement in the way they feel and the way they sleep once they're in that tent. I mean, I, I'm just so mentally don't, reassured. Even it's placebo to know that I'm doing the best I can. Well, especially you know, if you've got the meter. I mean, the meter's not going to lie. Yeah. I mean, if you're sh- – Yeah. Well, well, the meter – See, the acoustic comp two goes to zero essentially, but there's still background energy radiation. Even if you're in the woods, like Ben Greenfield, you know, uh, and others that I know and respect who are much wiser than me and actually moved out into the rural areas where there's hardly any, they hardly can even get a cell phone signal, which is good, but you're going to get uh, radiation exposure from the satellites. Uh, significantly lowers in the picrowatts, not the microwatts. So, but it's still there, and, it, and there's more satellites going up all the time. Awesome. Not right. awesome. <laughs> yeah, just more more exposure. Well, anything else you want to cover? I know you've been grateful with your time this morning. Anything else you want to touch on? No, I'm just excited to uh, be going back. I'm uh, really sad that I missed it last year. Uh, a lot of great people were there. I heard the event was fantastic, so uh, I'm excited to be going again. But we're turning it to 11 this year, Joe. We're going to one above 10. We're going to 11, the old Spinal Tap line. All right, well, good. Yeah, that'll be good. I'm look, looking forward to it. Well, count, we, I would love months. It's getting getting closer and closer. I know. I got to start practicing the music here, and we're having Aaron play with us again this year. She's excited yeah, about that. She missed her opportunity last year. I forget. Yeah, I was just kind of a, just a, what happened was that the keyboard player from the day before took the keyboards that she was supposed to play away, and it was like I didn't know what to tell her. So it was. Oh, okay. She is a this, keyboard lady. Yeah, she's oh. a keyboard lady. So. All right. I am excited to be uh, having you back again this year. If you'd like to do another podcast in the near future, I'd love to line one up maybe a few months down the road when your book's a little bit – how long does it take you to write a book? That's the question I wanted to ask you. Well, I have uh, streamlined the process, so I have a whole team that helps me. I do all the research. I do the reading. Like for the reading – for Fat for Fuel, I read about a dozen books, probably about a thousand scientific papers. I really dive deep into the molecular biology to understand this at a very deep level. Uh, so, and I think you've done a great job of taking that very scientific information and made it palatable to just the general public. I mean, I'm, I mean, I, that was my opinion. I, your book is really. I easy thought to I thought I did I did so too. You know, because I've got a really good editor, so I give her all the, I give her all my notes and a general outline in the notes, and she writes it, and then I edit every word, and then it goes out to other scientific contributors who review it for accuracy to make sure it's solid. So it might take me about a year or okay. so. That sounds feasible. Yeah. yeah. All right. I just want to thank you again from my heart. You've always been a big mentor of mine. I'm honored to speak with you on this podcast. And I just, I know you've influenced so many people across the world with everything that you've done with Mercola.com. And I'm just excited to have you back again. All right. Just well, showing well, my love and appreciation towards you. All right, Billy. Thanks a lot. And uh, it's nice to get a little love once in a while, isn't it, Doctor Joe? <laughs> well, yeah, there's a, <laughs> a lot of hate bombs thrown at me. No yeah, question. I get them. I get them too. So, but you know what? <laughs> if I don't get the hate bombs, I just don't feel like I feel like I've gotten soft. So, you know what I mean? You got to well, enjoy. Keep the, you get do and enjoy the waves out there and getting some sunshine. Yeah, I'm going surfing right after this. So, All right, peace good. out. Thank you again. I'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, Billy. Right, rock and roll. Bye. Do we want to get right? all go to 11. Look, 
right across the board. Oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11, the and then amps go up to 10. Exactly. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? It's not 10. You see, most, most blokes are going to be playing at 10. You're on 10 here, all the way up, all the way up, yeah. all the way up. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere, exactly. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Uh, put it up to 11. 11, exactly. One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. 